excellent schools, support for our veterans, medical research, upgraded infrastructure. Imagine if we could afford all these things. Well, we actually can. But somewhere along the way, we forgot the true power of our currency. We invented the US dollar so we could unleash the full potential of our nation, of our people, of our land, and of our economy to achieve our greatest aspirations. You see, the United States is a currency issuer. Currency issuers are completely different than currency users. This distinction is a really big deal. Cities, businesses, and households like yours and mine are all currency users. Our federal government is not. Currency issuers are unique. They should not behave like currency users. If you can grasp that, you're already further along than most of our politicians. Currency is our government's money. Only the US government can create our nation's currency. Many countries work this way, but not those like Greece, which gave up their national currency. Not all money is created by the government. Banks, credit card companies, and other institutions also create money each time they issue credit or loan. We call bank money credit to distinguish it from currency. Most of the money in our economy is bank credit, but credit is not the same as currency. Currency plays a unique and important role in our economy. As a nation, we dream big about how to make life better for our citizens and communities. Unlike you and I, who have to earn or borrow money to spend it, we gave our government the exclusive power to issue the national currency. Every time our government spends, it creates currency, usually just by adding numbers to bank accounts on a computer. And when it taxes, it removes some of its currency by subtracting those numbers. It's a bit like keeping score. Adding and subtracting currency to various accounts is like adding and deleting points in a computer game. So our government can't run out of its currency any more than a computer can run out of numbers to add. And it never needs to get points before it can add more. Now you may be wondering, if the government can just issue currency with a computer, why would anyone accept it as payment for anything? Why would it have any value at all? Well, this is where we discover why we have taxes. Federal taxes can only be paid with the government's currency. In order to pay our taxes and stay in Uncle Sam's good graces, we have to first get its currency. By requiring that we return that currency to pay our taxes, the government creates continual demand for the currency it alone issues. Now, because some people, including many of our politicians, don't understand the difference between currency issuers and currency users, they think Uncle Sam needs our tax money to pay for spending. But it's actually the other way around. The government spending gives us the currency we need to pay our taxes. So those taxes simply remove from the economy some of the currency which was already issued by the federal government. This helps our economy stay in a healthy balance. One of the biggest responsibilities of the currency issuer is to make sure it isn't causing unemployment or inflation by taxing or spending too much or too little. The really powerful part about all this is that not only can currency issuers like the US never go broke, but they can also always afford whatever they're authorized to do. But if the government doesn't need money from external sources to fund that spending, what's with all this fear about the national debt? Don't we owe China a kajillion dollars or something? Aren't we worried they'll stop buying our government bonds? Well, not really. Think about it. How can we borrow US dollars from China when all US dollars are made in the USA? You see, China gets their US currency through trade. They send us stuff and we pay them with currency, which they, along with many other countries, like to save. We like to save currency too. US government bonds are actually just big savings accounts, a really safe way to hold currency that's already been spent into existence. So that big, scary sounding number that's commonly called the national debt is actually just a record of all the savings of US dollars since our country began. All the currency that's been spent into the economy and not yet taxed back. That's nothing to fear. You probably noticed that our government is almost always adding more currency into our economy than it takes out in taxes. We call this a government deficit but it's actually a completely normal and necessary response to people saving its currency. You see, our capitalist economy is dependent on sales growth. Money that's being stashed away or spent overseas isn't being spent on the goods we produce here at home. When US sales fall, 
Our employers have less income, and they're eventually forced to cut production and jobs. As the sole issuer of our currency, the government plays a vital role in helping our economy keep growing. We decide what we want our government paying for, and that sets the amount of currency it creates via spending. The government should then adjust the amount it removes via taxation to just enough so our economy stays at full employment and avoids inflation. In other words, Congress is supposed to manage the currency to balance the economy. Freeing our government from senseless limitations like debt ceilings and balancing the budget enables it to use its sovereign currency powers to accomplish the real and serious tasks for which it was formed in the first place. Tasks like putting available resources to work on our infrastructure, investing in the health and education of our people, ensuring our safety and well-being, ending unemployment and keeping our economy growing, taking care of our retired, our sick, our hungry, our poor, our huddled masses. Sound familiar? As we rediscover the power of our sovereign currency, let's hold our government accountable to use it wisely for our nation's prosperity and for the well-being of all its citizens.